God has spoken by his prophets, spoken his son changing word, each from age to age proclaiming God for one, the righteous Lord. In the world's despair and turmoil, one firm anchor holds us fast. God is King, His throne eternal, God the first and God the last. God has spoken by Christ Jesus, Christ the everlasting Son, brightness of the Father's glory with the Father ever one. Spoken by the Word incarnate, God of God before time was, light of light to earth descending, He reveals our God to us. God is speaking by His Spirit, speaking to our hearts again. In the ageless word declaring his own message now as then. Through the rise and fall of nations, one sure faith yet standing fast. God abides his word unchanging, God the first and In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all. Amen. As we prepare to celebrate the mystery of Christ's love, we confess that we are sinners and ask the Lord for pardon and for strength. You were sent to heal the contrite. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You plead for us at the right hand of the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us all our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty and eternal God, direct all our actions according to your holy will that our lives may be rich in good works done in the name of your beloved Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from Nehemiah, the eighth chapter. All the people gathered together into the square before the water gate. They told the scribe Ezra to bring the book of the law of Moses, which the Lord had given to Israel. Accordingly, the priest Ezra brought the law before the assembly, both men and women, and all who could hear with understanding. This was on the first day of the seventh month. He read from it, facing the square before the water gate, from early morning until midday, in the presence of the men and the women and those who could understand. And the ears of all the people were attentive to the book of the law. And Ezra opened the book in the sight of all the people, for he was standing above all the people when he opened it, and the people stood up. Then Ezra blessed the Lord, the great God, and all the people answered, Amen, Amen. 
lifting up their hands. Then they bowed their heads and worshiped the Lord with their faces to the ground. So they read from the book, from the law of God with interpretation. They gave the sense so that the people could understand the reading. And Nehemiah, who was the governor, and Ezra, the priest and scribe, and the Levites, who taught the people, said to all the people, This day is holy to the Lord your God. Do not mourn or weep. For all the people wept when they heard the words of the law. Then he said to them, Go your way, eat the fat, drink the sweet wine, and send portions of them to those for whom nothing is prepared. For this day is holy to our Lord. And do not be grieved, for the joy of the Lord is your strength. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Your words, O Lord, are spirit and life. Your words, O Lord, are spirit and life. The law of the Lord is perfect, refreshing the soul. The decree of the Lord is trustworthy, giving wisdom to the simple. Your words, O Lord, are spirit and life. The precepts of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The commands of the Lord are clear, enlightening the eye. Your words, O Lord, are spirit and life. The fear of the Lord is pure, enduring forever. The ordinances of the Lord are true, all of them just. Your words, O Lord, are spirit and life. Let the words of my mouth and the thoughts of my heart find favor before you, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. Your words, O Lord, are spirit and life. A reading from 1 Corinthians, the 12th chapter. For just as the body is one and has many members, and all the members of the body, though many, are one body, so it is with Christ. For in the one spirit we were all baptized into one body, Jews and Greeks, slaves or free, and we were all made to drink of one spirit. Indeed, the body does not consist of one member, but of many. If the foot were to say, because I am not a hand, I do not belong to the body, that would not make it any less a part of the body. And if the ear would say, because I am not an eye, I do not belong to the body, that would not make it any less a part of the body. If the whole body were an eye, where would be the hearing? If the whole body were a hearing, where would the sense of smell be? But as it is, God arranged the members in the body, each one of them as he chooses. If all were a single member, where would the body be? As it is, there are many members, yet one body. The eye cannot say to the hand, I have no need of you, nor again the head to the feet, I have no need of you. On the contrary, the members of the body that seem to be weaker are indispensable, and those members of the body that we think less honorable we clothe with greater honor, and our less respectable members are treated with greater respect. Whereas our more respectable members do not need this. But God has arranged the body, giving the greater honor to the respectable, um, to the inferior member, that there may be no dissension within the body, 
but the members may have the same care for one another. If one member suffers, all suffer together with it. If one member is honored, all rejoice together with it. Now you are the body of Christ, and individually members of it. And God has appointed in the church first apostles, second prophets, third teachers, then deeds of power, then gifts of healing, forms of assistance, forms of leadership, various kinds of tongues. Are all apostles? Are all prophets? Are all teachers? Do all work miracles? Do all possess gifts of healing? Do all speak in tongues? Do all interpret? But strive for the greater gifts. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, the Lord has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. He sent me to proclaim release to the captives. Alleluia, alleluia. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Then Jesus, filled with the power of the Holy Spirit, returned to Galilee, and a report about him spread through all the surrounding country. He began to teach in their synagogues and was praised by everyone. When he came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up, he went to the synagogue on the Sabbath day, as was his custom. He stood up to read, and the scroll of the prophet Isaiah was given to him. He unrolled the scroll and found the place where it was written, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim release to the captives, recovery of sight to the blind, to let the oppressed go free, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. And he rolled up the scroll, gave it back to the attendant, and sat down. The eyes of all in the synagogue were fixed on him. Then he began to say to them, Today this scripture has been fulfilled in your hearing. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. with all. 
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let the words of my mouth and the thought of my heart find favor before you, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. Amen. Today, it's all about the power of the word. Our world is awash in words, words designed to manipulate our emotions, words designed to stir up passion or commitment to a cause. More often, words designed to move us, to open up our wallets and make that next purchase that will somehow, we imagine, make us fulfilled and happy. The world is awash with words, but today it's all about the word. St. John would talk about the word that was made flesh and dwelt among us, full of grace and truth. And today, in these early days of reflecting on Jesus' mission and ministry in this world, we hear a story about his use of the word. Jesus, filled with the power of the Spirit, the Spirit that descended upon him in bodily form like a dove, that anointed him for his mission and ministry, that same Spirit gave him power. And what did that power move him to do? I mean, last week we heard how it gave him power to turn water into wine and show forth by that sign his identity. And his disciples believed in that visible word, the word reflected in his action. Today, Jesus begins to teach in their synagogues and was praised by everyone. He came to his hometown, visited church, because that's what people should do, came to church and he was handed the scroll of the prophet Isaiah. And opening up that scroll and unrolling it, he found a text. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. Lest we wonder what the anointing with the Holy Spirit implied at Jesus' baptism, he makes it clear that he has sent, been sent to proclaim release to captives, recovery of sight to the blind, and to let the oppressed go free. To proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. That phrase referred to a tradition in the book of Moses, the Torah, upon which the prophet Isaiah reflected, in which once every 49 years in the 50th year, every debt was canceled, all confiscated property returned to the family for whom it had been given. It was a year of favor. And needless to say, if one was in debt up to your ears, then the year of the Lord's favor was a great gift. But if you had been in the banking industry, if you had let money out on lease, if a family that had fallen on hard times had been forced to sell their real estate, you were expected to give it up. It may be the year of the Lord's favor, but it was not the year of favor for the powerful and the rich. And yet, the Spirit of the Lord was upon Jesus because he was anointed to bring good news to the poor, to the broken, to the outcast, to proclaim release to captives. And yes, it probably meant parole for those who were in the penal system of the day, but even more so, 
It is freedom for you, for me, for all of us who are enslaved in the bondage to sin, bondage to the reality of our own mortality, and we have been freed. All of these words from Isaiah had been read for countless generations before the time of Jesus. It was always seen as a promise of some day, of a day to come when things will be put right, when we will know well-being, wholeness, and happiness, but as something in a far distant future. Jesus read that text, closed the book, gave it back to the lector, and the eyes of all were upon him. And then he began to say to them, Today this scripture has been fulfilled in your hearing. It is no longer a wish for a distant future. It has come with the arrival of Emmanuel, of God with us, whom the prophet Isaiah had foretold. It was in the coming of Jesus that everything that had been hoped for and longed for for countless generations now reaches its fulfillment. Because the Spirit of the Lord is upon him. A spirit that has anointed him, has christened him, and made him the Christ, the Son of the living God, as St. Peter proclaimed, as we heard last Tuesday, as we will hear on this coming Tuesday. It is the same Jesus who revealed himself to Saul as he was traveling on the road to Emmaus, on the road to arrest God's people. Jesus made himself known, the Word made flesh. Your Word, O Lord, is spirit and life, Peter came to know in the revelation of Jesus Christ. Your words, O Lord, are spirit and life. St. Paul would come to know when Jesus manifested himself on the way and gave to Peter and gave to Paul words that are spirit, that bring that same spirit that descended upon Jesus Christ to his people that mean for us life everlasting. And so we have been called to be people of the word. It was a slogan of the Reformation, sola scriptura, scriptures alone. And why? Because it is some ancient document from a far off time? No. Because just as a manger carried the body of the infant Jesus so many years before this day at Nazareth, so the scriptures carry Jesus' very presence. Jesus is the word that is the beginning and the end of all scriptures. The law of the Lord is perfect, not meaning a verse or two taken out of context, worked into an appropriate graphic meme that circulates on Facebook. No, the word that is Jesus Christ. He is perfect. He is the decree of the Lord that is trustworthy. He is the one who gives wisdom to the simple. We have, as Martin Luther explained in the Catechism, been called by the Gospel. We've been enlightened with his gifts. That word of grace that speaks liberty to those in bondage has been spoken to us. It is a word that is in our hearts, on our lips, in 
our minds. May the word of Christ dwell in us richly. As we teach and admonish one another in songs and hymns and spiritual songs, as St. Paul would put it, the word that we have received has been the word that gives us the Spirit, the same Spirit that is on Jesus Christ. That is a word that speaks life to us in spite of the brokenness and the pain and the suffering of this imperfect world. That word is life. Today, St. Mark's, these scriptures have been fulfilled in your hearing. That liberty is yours. That life is yours. This is the year of the Lord's favor. This is the year that means release to the captive. We who have been bound together as one body in the word of God each carry our own distinct gifts. St. Paul made that abundantly clear in the epistle for this day. Not everybody has the same set of gifts. Some teach, some preach, some have various kinds of service, some speak in tongues, some interpret the tongues, but all share in the greater gift, the gift of love. Love that is God, love that has been revealed to us in Jesus Christ, and love that invites us to share. So when we go in peace to love and serve the Lord, we carry with us the Word, Jesus Christ, and we open our lips to speak His Word. Morning prayer begins every day. O Lord, open my lips and my mouth will proclaim your praise. That is the cry of all of us who have seen that the scriptures have been fulfilled in Jesus Christ, fulfilled for us, fulfilled for the world. His words are spirit and life. May those words be on our lips to bring spirit and life to a dying world. To the Word made flesh, with his Father and the Spirit be glory and honor, now and forever. Amen. Living together in love and in hope, we confess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the holy Christian church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Inspired by the Spirit of God present among us, Let's give voice to our prayers for all of God's people. That in all of our parish ministries, we may proclaim God's favor for all humanity. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. That the church may be a community of enablement, encouraging and supporting all men, women, and children to use their gifts and talents for the building up of the body of Christ, let us pray to the Lord, Lord, have mercy. <clears throat> that the children of our pre-K-3 class might follow Jesus and so grow in wisdom, stature, <clears throat> 
favor with God and others. Through the loving and wise guidance of their teacher, Kimberly Kenny, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. That the Holy Spirit would grace the families of Arts and Mission New York with his love, joy, and peace. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. <clears throat> that through the work of the International Lutheran Council, our mission of the month, the good news of new life in Jesus Christ might go forth throughout the world. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. That the people of God of Mount Zion Lutheran Church in Harlem and their pastor, Reverend George Ramsed, might faithfully engage their community with a gospel of hope. Lord, in your mercy, Lord, have mercy. That the nations and peoples of this world may embrace God's spirit of joy, liberty, and peace. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Those who teach and proclaim the gospel may reveal to their students and hearers Jesus' vision of compassion and hope. Let us pray to the Lord, Lord, have mercy, that we may reach out with patient understanding and support those who are imprisoned in poverty, abuse, or addiction. Let us pray to the Lord, Lord, have mercy that God would hear the prayers that we now make in the silence of our hearts. Let us pray to the Lord, Lord, have mercy. In thanksgiving for all those who have died in Christ's peace, and now have come to know the promise of the resurrection, including St. Mary, the mother of our Lord, and St. Mark, the patron of our parish. St. Paul, converted by the revelation of Jesus Christ. Saints Timothy and Titus. St. Thomas Aquinas, St. Angela Merici, St. Francis de Sales, as well as all of our own departed family members, friends, and benefactors. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. God of graciousness, hear our prayers. May your law of justice and mercy and the gospel of compassion and humility not shackle us into debating legalisms and narrow interpretations, but free us to seek and to do your will in all things. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. God of mercy, pour forth upon us the spirit of your love, that we who have been nourished by your word may be one in mind and heart. Grant this through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. May Almighty God bless us, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.
the one who breaks the darkness with a liberating light. Praise the one who frees the prisoners, turning blindness into sight. Praise the one who preached the gospel, healing every dread disease, calming storms and feeding thousands with the very bread of peace. Praise the one who blessed the children with a strong yet gentle word. Praise the one who drove out demons with a piercing two-edged sword. Praise the one who brings cool water to the desert's burning sand. From the well comes living water, quenching thirst in every land. Let us praise the Word incarnate, Christ who suffered in our place. Jesus died and rose victorious, that we may know God by grace. Let us sing for joy and gladness, seeing what our God has done. Let us praise the 